Hi, I'm Non from My Authentic Style, and this channel is dedicated to helping you find your authentic style. In this video, I'll be discussing the Kibi Soft Dramatic, specifically the body type, the style profile, and I'll also share a sample wardrobe and shopping guide for this type. This video assumes that you've taken the Kibi test and you've determined your type to be soft dramatic. If you haven't, you can find my video that takes you through the test as well as the video following that where I take you through the results and you'll be up to speed. For soft dramatic, your answers will mostly be A, but it will also have some D and E answers. On the yin and yang scale, the soft dramatic position is bold yang with a pronounced yin current. A simplified way of thinking about this is to imagine a dramatic and a romantic mixed together. But here the structure is yang, so there's long elongation and sharpness, and then the flesh on top of it is soft and lush, and the features may also be soft and lush. It's important to note that the Kibi Soft Dramatic will look different on different women. I'll be working with celebrities that have been verified or if not verified, that fall very perfectly within what we describe when talking about the Soft Dramatic. So we would all agree that these people inhibit the typical status quo, quote unquote, of this type. Um, but with that, Understand that different women can manifest these things in different ways. And you may very well be a soft dramatic, but not show each and every one of these characteristics in the way that I will describe it. And not having one or two of these things doesn't disqualify you from a type. It's really more about an overall feel of that body and how clothing falls on you. Uh, so keep that in mind so that we don't get pigeonholed or too hung up on one or two characteristics. For the soft dramatic, it's the overall dominance of sharp yang and vertical line with yin as a secondary feature that makes the soft dramatic. Now let's discuss the soft dramatic body type. Height, moderate to tall, usually five foot five and over, these women have a long vertical, meaning they appear tall and often are. Also notable is that there is no lower limit. So that long vertical is about appearance, but somebody can be shorter than you would expect as long as they visually look taller than they are or they look like they are a tall person, meaning that they maintain a long vertical line. Body type, fleshy unless they are ultra thin. These women are fleshy, particularly through the bust and hip area. Upper arms and thighs can become more fleshy with weight gain. They usually have long legs and arms. They usually have a moderate sized waist, which can become thick. Bone structure. Bones are long and angular and typically narrow. This can be seen through the shoulders, the wrists, or any of the angles. They have long limbs. Hands and feet are usually long and narrow, although they may exhibit some width. Facial bones are sharp or prominent, and this is typically seen through the nose, jawline, and cheekbones. However, the narrowness of the structure is not delicate. As with the dramatic, the long vertical of this type means that they cannot be described as delicate. A better word to describe their features would be sleek. The soft dramatic is a dramatic with a romantic undercurrent. Facial features. The facial features will be yin in nature. They are lush, sensual, and full. Kibi has described them as exotic, although depending on 
your particular race or ethnicity, that word might not fit. I think this is one of the areas where the limitations of the women that could be worked with and focused on becomes apparent. Lush and full features are not exotic for a large part of, say, the African-American community or other non-European groupings of people. So take that word with a pinch of salt. I think it's more important to realize that the lushness comes with large eyes, full lips, fleshy cheeks, because that's a more universal understanding of what yin could look like. Coloring. Any coloring is possible, warm or cool, high contrast or blended, but a soft dramatic is usually distinct. So they can be either very fair, very fiery, very dark, very vivid. Something about them is distinctive. If overweight, the soft dramatic type tends to first gain weight in the fleshy areas of the body, meaning the bust, the hips, the waist, the thighs, the upper arms, and especially in the face. We're going to talk about Tyra Banks for a little bit. And Tyra was one of the supermodels in the 90s. And you can see her here that she, to me, she looks like a soft dramatic. I don't think she has been verified by Kibbe himself, but I am using her a lot in this video, so I do hope I'm correct. But I see in her a sharp angularity, but I also see that lush flesh. Even in the green two-piece where she is very skinny, I can still see that sharp angularity and that soft flesh. Although the softness is not as much as it will be in the images to come, I can still see it. I don't feel like she is very scenery as I would a dramatic. There is something pinchable about her flesh and there's a softness to her. But there the angularity stands out more because she is at a lower weight. The image right next to it, we can see a little bit more of that flesh and I can see it in her thigh area and she just has a softness to it. I, I always want to describe her body as being lush. And even though she is obviously at a low weight here, it's still there. So that's a key feature of the soft dramatic. Now we see her having gained a little bit more weight from those first two images. And again, the lushness is what stands out. I see it more in her, her thigh area and she just becomes softer. And you can see this continue as she gains more weight moving to the right. Her hourglass figure becomes more pronounced so she gains weight in that hip area and the thigh area and it becomes more lush. And importantly, I can still see the angularity of Tyra again, even with that lushness. For weight gain, I'd like to also discuss another soft dramatic who is verified, which is Adele. And she's an interesting case because she's been in the spotlight for a long time and we've been able to see her at very different weight points. She had massive weight loss. So it's interesting to see and study her body type through these transitions. Adele has, I think she inhibits more of that typical soft dramatic weight distribution as is described here, because I can see her weight loss and weight gain in all her features and especially in her face. For Adele, you can see that as she gains weight, everything just becomes more soft and everything, including her hands and her face and her neckline and that that hourglass figure becomes more and more ripe. And But there is a thickening of her waist as well. So everything just gets slightly wider and softer. I also want to discuss Adele when she was at the very lower end of her weight spectrum. For me, even though she is very skinny in these images, I still see the softness. I can still see it in the first image to the left in her leg area. She's very slim, but there's still that softness of flesh. 
I see it obviously in the middle one where uh, her hip area, she just feels like the flesh feels, looks like it would feel very lush. And again, in the last one, it's that thigh area or even the chest area. And there's a sharpness to her bone structure, yes, but her hands, even the flesh around the bones, all of it feels very, at least looks as though it would feel very soft. So very key component of the soft dramatic. And I can see it again here too. In her leg area, there's that softness of flesh. And of course, in her face, her cheeks are soft. So this, again, will be a key component of the soft dramatic body type. With that, I do want to quickly touch on this aspect of the face. It says here that the soft dramatic type will gain weight specifically in the face. And that is true for some body types or rather for some people, but not all people. For Adele, this is clearly the case. I can see in these pictures where she is at a lesser weight and where she is at a heavier weight. There's no um, doubt in my mind because she thickens around the neck area, her chin, everything gets a little bit more softer and puffier. And to the left, you can see everything is a lot less puffy, a lot um, a lot more shrunken, right? You can see, okay, she's at a lower weight there versus the other image. But this is Tyra Banks at one of her heavier weights as compared to, obviously she looks great and she's not heavy at all, but compared to um, her when she was a model, this is her having gained some weight. But notably, her face looks exactly the same. She doesn't gain weight in her face. So this is not true for all people. It will be true for some, just another thing where there can be discrepancies. A soft dramatic will not be petite or extremely small in stature, have short arms and legs, be perfectly symmetrical, have a boyish figure, have delicate facial features. Here are some soft dramatic celebrities. The green buttons indicate those that are verified and the yellow is those that I think would be soft dramatic but have not been verified by Kibi himself. And here is a list of Kibi verified celebrities in the soft dramatic category. Now let's discuss the soft dramatic lines. Shape. The overall shape of your clothing should be large and crisp with slightly rounded edges, bold geometrics with soft edges, and oversized ornate shapes. The silhouette is bold and sweeping. Strive for a T silhouette, meaning highlighting the broad shoulders with an elongated vertical softened by narrowly draped and flowing lines. Waist emphasis is important for this type. I'll be looking at Hannah Weddingham's style as a great example of soft dramatic style. She, to me, is a clear soft dramatic. She has the vertical, she has the lushness, and importantly, she dresses for that. Here you can see to the right the black dress, and although cropped pieces are typically not for soft dramatics what i like about the placement of this piece is it highlights her shoulders so this is that creation of that t silhouette and the black dress is the long vertical part of it and of course a long head to toe dress that is softly draped is perfect for a soft dramatic so this peachy dress looks stunning on her avoid sharp edge geometrics small delicate shapes, stiffly tailored lines, broken staccato lines, overly fitted fussy silhouettes, wide shapeless silhouettes. As I'm sure you'll agree, these outfits are not as flattering on Hannah as the ones we just saw. In the first black image, the dress is very stiff on her. Also, the length is just not ideal. 
Her body is lost in it. There's no movement or draping to shape her beautiful curves. And it's all just, it's not, it, it doesn't flatter her. The image to the right of that is, it shapes her nicely, but the fabric is too stiff on her. So there's no movement. She really does look her best with draping. And that just looks very stiff on her. Again, same thing with the dress to the right of that. It just looks like she's stuck inside this green metallic piece. And I want to give her a little bit of room so she can move and breathe. And I want, I love the shaping of it, but it's, it's too stiff. And in the last image, the skirt is, first of all, the length doesn't flatter her. Um, that waist belt offers, it's great typically for shaping, but in, in this case, the skirt that comes out straight after it loses her shape entirely. And then this, the length of the skirt cuts her at an awkward place. So she kind of looks shrunken and that flare and it, the skirt is too youthful. The entire look becomes too youthful for the mature essence of this type and the very prominent bone structure and flesh. This is like a little girl dress and it just doesn't work. Fabrics. Lightweight fabrics that drape easily and flow gracefully. Soft and plush textures with a deep pile. Shiny fabrics. So anything glamorous is perfect for this type. Avoid heavy fabrics that create a stiff shape. Heavyweights will be stiff and unbending on you. Avoid rough textures which will appear graceless on you. As you can see in these images to the right, these fabrics are all too stiff for these women. I think all of them are soft dramatics and I think all of them are not flattered by this heavy, stiff fabric. Hannah to the left in the black dress is an example of her in her right lines. It's flowing, it's draped, it gives her great shape and she looks amazing. And it's also got a bit of sheen to it, so it looks glamorous. It really pulls out all the, the best aspects of the soft dramatic. To the right, the suits that she and Adele are wearing are all in this stiff fabric. Adele's one has a bit more shaping, which is better than Hannah's, but again, it's too stiff. It just looks rough and unrefined. And it's it's not all the way harmonious with all of them. I want to put them in something else entirely. And Tyra's look is also unflattering. I dislike a lot of it. It's too bold and geometric, but not in the way that she requires. It has none of that rounded edging. So it looks very stiff. I also dislike the length of it. It cuts her off weirdly and just overall not working, but focusing on the fabrics, they're all too stiff and they don't allow enough of that body framing and draping that this type needs. Details. Details should always be bold, flamboyant, lavish, ornate and oversized. Cows are super draped. Lapels are oversized and soft. Broad shoulders. Soft draped necklines. Lavish and dramatic trim. Think of beading, ruffles, lace, etc. In these images, the first one, um, Hannah, is it's not particularly her best look, right? The the length is not ideal and it's really missing a lot of the pizzazz that she needs. But the details of the skirt, of the fabric, that sheen and that kind of, um, I don't know what you would call that fabric, but it has detail that's interesting and is very shiny and glamorous. And it pulls this look sort of together enough where it's passable. So that's how important that is for this type. If that fabric was flat and didn't have that detail, this look would just be all the way off on her. Right now, it's still off, but it's it's okay. And that's on the basis of the fabric choice alone. The feathers that Tyra is wearing in that second look is interesting. This is detail that 
is um, over the top on other types, but is great for the soft dramatic. And that ribbon detail in the purple dress, everything is just meant to be a little bit extra and interesting on this type. Otherwise, they look very boring very quickly. And this is Hannah in her famous Rebecca character from Ted Lasso, which is a show that really understood this soft dramatic typing because they dressed her so well all the time. Notice how draped that uh, shirt is and that tie and how loosely it falls above her. All that softness and lushness of fabric is perfect for this body type because it mirrors that lushness of the flesh and she just looks amazing. Avoid. Small, delicate detail. Sharp, severe, or crisp detail. Here you can see the small, delicate detail in the lace. For both these women in these looks, I just feel like they're too big for this kind of detail. It looks too small on them. In that dress to the bottom, I almost feel like Hannah's going to burst out of it because of how delicate that lace is and how that delicacy juxtaposes against her dominant frame. It just doesn't match up. I feel the same way in the other black dress, although there it's more about the ruffles at the elbows. It's not that I feel as though she's going to burst out of it. It just feels very silly on her. It's too youthful, too childish. And with Tyra Banks, that outfit doesn't work for a number of reasons. But again, that delicacy of lace just doesn't, it, it, it's, it doesn't work, especially on a head to toe ensemble like that. You also want to avoid minimal detail. In these looks, she, both of these women have nothing really to focus on. And this is a mistake for the soft dramatic because they always are, they're best suited to glamour. So there needs to be something visually interesting and beautiful and dramatic on them. And here, this is too simple, too plain. I don't know where really to focus. And denim for Hannah is too casual a fabric for her to wear this uh, as a focal point. It just, it's doing nothing for her. Likewise with Tyra, this is not really flattering her in any way. And you also want to avoid symmetrical detail. So this is an interesting look, but it's just not the best for this type. A little bit of drama. This is too plain. It's too um, balanced for this type. This is really more suited for a classic kind of essence and or body type. Separates. Your separates should artfully blend lush textures, rich colors, and luxurious prints. So your elongated line will not be disrupted. You're striving for a head-to-toe ensemble effect and not a mix and match approach. I like both these looks because there are there is a sort of harmony to them, right? Starting with Tyra's look, the top leads into the skirt beautifully. There's obviously a difference in texture and color and pattern, but it they all work well together. This looks like something that was put together mindfully the shoe the nude of the shoe and the top part of her dress picks up that same kind of peachy nudie um, tone in the skirt so everything just kind of blends beautifully together likewise for hannah she's wearing clear separates but the colors are not so far apart that it's jarring it looks again well blended well put together and the colors of the shirt picks up in her hair so there's all of that working together. Avoid obvious, separate, uncohesive uses of color. Now, if we compare this second look that Hannah is wearing to her first, you can see how far apart those colors are. And now it lacks that cohesiveness. That green pant really just stands out. And I don't get that put together look anymore. Also, as a side note, these pants don't work on her because 
they're it's going to seem like a small detail, but they aren't ironed or, or they were when she sat down and they creased. But that stands out against her because this type calls for a sort of refinement and something like that will stand out against her. So another thing to be mindful of and the length as well. Cropped pieces, not typically the best for the elongated types. Um, so there's just a lot of minor things that make this look not as flattering on her as the first one. And of course, on Tyra, this mismatch color blocking is completely uncohesive. And it's not to say that soft dramatics don't look great in color because they do. They really handle bold coloring well, but this lacks a sort of put together head to toe ensemble look that is very flattering for the type. Color. Your use of color should always be bold and dramatic, never dull. You shine in original color combinations that emphasize bright, dark mixtures. Pastels can be elegant if you execute them in head to toe sweeps and monochromatic schemes will generally require some vivid accenting in the accessory department. Strive for a very polished ensemble approach to your use of a palette. So here we can see in the very first look to the left, um, that bold color pattern that is up top in Hannah's dress. And the reason I like this is because the preservation of the vertical is front and center, but still she's using color and pattern to make the look more interesting. So that black carries out from the top all the way through to the skirt, and that creates that long vertical line and she really, she looks great. I see that also in the pink and black look in Tyra's dress, as that use of color creates something interesting to look at. It creates an interesting pattern, but it's carried out from top to bottom. So obviously this creates the head to toe ensemble effect. In the image next to it, this is where we see a really bold use of color and pattern, and this is so great and flattering on the soft dramatic. This is a lot. There's a pattern in the, in the pants, a checkered pattern in the pants. There's a striped pattern in the shirt. There's a leopard print in the jacket, and the scarf that she has draped over her shoulder also has its own very bold striped detail, and it's fur. So this could very quickly become overwhelming in a different type. You think of a classic, for example, there's just too much going on. And that kind of woman would have to choose which of these patterns or elements she wants to focus on. And the mix of it in the way that Tyra has done would be overwhelming. But as a soft dramatic, she's very easily able to pull this off. I don't get a sense that this is overwhelming her in any way. It's just a very interesting look. Uh, these women typically can and should lean into dramatic uses of colors and patterns. Otherwise, they look very dull very quickly. But it has to look put together and it has to look polished. Otherwise, they it won't be flattering. And in the last image is more of a bold use of color and how Hannah has managed to balance it well. Um, typically, you wouldn't want to have something that stark, like we discussed before in the use of separates, but I think it works here. The bright of the green is very flattering on her and that's the biggest part of this. And then the black is repeated in the shoe and the top. So it kind of creates that illusion of a long vertical line and where the skirt cuts her also creates a skirt that is very long. So in and of itself, that is very uh, much maintaining her long vertical. So altogether, this works to create a very beautiful look on Hannah. Avoid multicolor splashes and a mix and match approach to color. You can see this in the first two images. Both these women are wearing these very bright, and pastel -y, I would say, colorways where there isn't a distinct pattern or distinct coloring 
and no real geometry in that color. And that is very important for the soft dramatic. This becomes too busy and distracting on both of them. And I just don't like the way that it looks against them. Also avoid bland monochromatic color schemes. In that image to the right, Hannah looks very dull. It's because the color is too close to her skin tone, but also just a general blandness of the entire outfit. There's nothing interesting to look at. It looks very boring on her. So these women need that very grandiose sense of glamour. And this look is utterly lacking in that department and it doesn't flatter her at all. Prints. Soft dramatic prints should be bold, wild, and ornate in shape. Splashy watercolors, but again, not like over here, not multicolor splashes of color. So keep that in mind. Oversized and abstract florals, animal prints, irregular shapes with soft or rounded edges. I like this black and white pattern that Tyra has. It reminds me of that um, rounded, geometric type of pattern that is so flattering for the soft dramatic because it's it's rounded and the colorway is very sharply contrasted. It's black and white. So it does all of those very interesting things and it looks beautiful on her. The pattern itself, I, I love it. I think this would be very difficult to pull off for certain types because it is so loud, but it's it looks great on Tyra. And again, the florals in the look to the left are oversized and very distinct. And again, it's that head to toe ensemble effect. So there's very interesting detail, but it all is very cohesive and it works together. And she looks wonderful. Avoid sharp geometrics. Avoid small symmetrical prints. Avoid delicate, fussy prints and animated or cute prints. This is very clear in the dress that Tara is wearing to the right. It's The dress itself is already too cute in nature. That little skirt that flares out, it just really doesn't work against her large structure, her large and yang dominant frame. It looks like she's wearing a little girl dress. And then the print on top of it is very fussy, small and ornate, and it's too cute for Tyra. She really needs something bolder and bigger like we see in the images to the left. And then for Hannah, again, we already discussed this suit, but that very sharp, intricate detail, there's too much straight lines and sharpness in it, in the cut off the actual suit, but also in its pattern and it just not very cohesive on her, not harmonious with her rather. And now let's discuss soft dramatic clothing. Please note that David Kibbe has repeatedly said that clothing doesn't belong to a specific type, rather that it's how you put a piece into an entire outfit that either makes it appropriate or inappropriate for that type. So starting with lingerie, for the soft dramatic, you have to remember that there is that very strong yin undercurrent. So a lot of the recommendations that would work for a very lush and soft romantic type would also work for the dramatic. So for these pieces, I've chosen ones with a lot of soft details that create that sense of lushness and softness and very feminine pieces. I can see that especially in this middle piece, uh, but I also really like the floral detail of that first ensemble. To the right, I really like the neckline of this nightgown. That draping is so beautiful and flattering for the soft dramatic. For swimsuits, again, a sparkly detail as we can see in this black piece to the right, that circle with um, some ornate detail that would add some sparkle and shine is very glamorous and anything glamorous is great for the soft dramatic. The swimsuit above it has that bow detail and again, just a small thing, but it adds that bit of softness 
to it. That is, again, great for this type with a little more um, subdued contrasting in the color, whereas the black swimsuit has that long elongation that is great for dramatic types, but the trim offers more of a higher contrast, which is, again, visually interesting and flattering for this type. And the middle one is just great for lushness. It really evokes that sense of softness and lushness and the sarong would hug the body and accentuate those curves, but also that tie detail creates that softness. For shorts, we're looking for elongation, but also a softness in the fabric. So that first white pair to the right really has that length aspect, but the fabric is pliable. It's not stiffly tailored as we would recommend for a dramatic type. And then of course you can do, it's shorts after all, so shorter lengths are also perfectly fine. But again, notice the softness in the fabric, those gathers that create that little bit of draping and um, that is going to really complement this type. And on that first pair to the left, I like that buckle detail that really has that geometric shape, but it's rounded, which again, flattering for this type. For casual tops, the focus is on draping and that curl neckline that adds a softness to um, what would otherwise be very sharply geometric necklines. So you see it in almost all the shapes, the top one that would have been a v-neck, but now it has that softness to it, which really would flatter this type. This is again true for formal tops. You want them to be soft and draped with draped necklines and the detail should be elongated and soft. So like the high necklines that highlight the elongation of this type. The black and white pattern here offers that contrast and visual interest, but it's not too drastic. You want to avoid sharply tailored blouses, plain blouses, delicate and fussy shirts, or wide, unconstructed or shapeless shirts. Pants. Pants should be straight, long and draped. Details should be soft and elongated. As you can see here, these pants have some weight to it, so a bit of that structure, but there's also some beautiful shaping and draping elements, which give that harmony with the soft dramatic. Avoid stiffly tailored pants, as we would recommend for a strict dramatic. Avoid wide unconstructed or baggy shapes or anything overly delicate and fussy. For jeans, I chose a lot of bootleg because it has that elongation, um, especially with the high-waisted cut, so that long vertical, but the shape of the bootleg brings in that roundedness and that shaping. But because this is a dramatic type, a lot of these women will still be flattered by a straight leg jean, like we see on the right. Jackets should have broad shoulders and long lines. You have to think again about maintaining that T silhouette. So having a broad shoulder and emphasizing that area is very flattering to this type. And again, you want that draping. So a cinched in waist to give shape is always a great go-to. The fabrics should be lightweight or slightly heavy and slightly constructed. To the right, I have a rather stiffly constructed jacket, but I feel it would still be very flattering on a soft dramatic type because even though it has that structure, it also has that curve. So it's shaped really well. And I also love the lapels don't feel too severe. There's a softness to it. And the contrast of the black and white is striking and bold, which is wonderful for this type but you want to avoid stiffly tailored jackets with sharp edges, anything traditional, anything short, no cropped pieces, or anything too fussy and delicate. 
Again, with codes, the same rules apply, but now we want to add elongation. As you can see here, the cinched waists, the lapels, the soft lapels, I love the fur detail, that's very glamorous. And anytime you can add a glamorous detail, that's always going to be flattering for the soft dramatic. Skirts should be straight, long, and draped. And any detail on the skirt should add to that elongation and softness. As you can see here, there's some draping, some ties, some uh, pieces that hang down. All of that creates that slight curve that breaks that otherwise harsh line. And soft fabrics that drape, again, always will be beautiful on the soft dramatic. Dresses should be elongated, draped with sh broad shoulders, and the details should be oversized and ornate. You want to stick with an elongated silhouette, but soft lines, so soft draping that gives the body great shape. So draping around the body, around the waist, and really create that beautiful shape of rounded geometrics. You want to avoid sharply tailored dresses, anything shapeless, unconstructed or wide, no flouncy styles or delicate or fussy detail. For evening wear, you want to focus on high glamour. These women look amazing in anything that you can describe as being glamorous. So draped fabrics, glitzy fabrics, ornate trim, sparkly features, Anything that makes you go, wow, that's so glamorous will always look great on the soft dramatic. And this is why these women often look amazing on the red carpet because they were made for that kind of over the top dress. And sometimes this is why it's difficult for them to dress in a day-to-day -day setting that isn't the red carpet. So you really have to find your style and balance it out. Soft dramatic accessories are large, bold, and ornate. You want to opt for bold geometric shapes with soft edges and anything that sparkles, gleams or shines works wonders for you. Bags should be softly rounded in oversized styles, leather, luxurious fabrics and any ornate sparkly detail. Avoid plain symmetric bags, small delicate styles also avoid any bags that are completely lacking in structure. Shoes should be tailored and angular with tapered toe and heel. High narrow heels are best and bare styles can also be very flattering. Feel free here to opt for bold designs like this zebra style shoe and some ornate sparkly detail. Soft dramatic jewelry should always be large, bold, and ornate. Bold geometric shapes with soft edges, oversized ornate shapes, anything sparkly, glittery, and shiny will be beautiful. Avoid sharp geometrics, simple pieces, delicate antique pieces, rough, chunky pieces, and especially avoid having no jewelry at all. The soft dramatic is really synonymous with the sense of glamour. So having no jewelry kind of pulls away from this. So you want to have these pieces to tie it all together and to give your outfits that sense of sparkle and shine. Hats should be theatrical and glamorous, emphasizing rounded shapes and ornate trim. And they should be large and oversized. Belts should be bold and wide with large and ornate buckles. The soft dramatic woman really gets to play around with accessories because they bring such drama to their looks and a failure to utilize these pieces can result in looks that are rather dull. Hair. Dramatic hair should always be lavish and full looking. The shape should be bold either geometric or asymmetric, but softened with curls, waves, or partial layering. The hair must always look sophisticated and well ca cared for, 
but it should also be soft and sensual, not stiff. Here, I see this in all three of these looks. I love Hannah's big voluminous hair and it's tuzzled, but still very kept. You know, it's not messy, um, but it's not stiff on her. Likewise, in the middle, Tyra's hair is big, but it's not stiff. It has that volume and it just shapes her face beautifully, but it doesn't feel stiff. There's life to all these hairstyles. The color should be vivid and distinct, regardless of hue and intensity. The richer your hair color, the better. Now let's discuss hair color a little bit. It says here that highlighting should be dramatically streaked and that the richer your hair color looks, whether real or artificial, the better. I think this can be true, but like all things, it also depends on that particular person and how that manifests. In the case of Tyra here, I think that this very dramatic dark color at the bottom is what they would call for, dramatic, bold coloring, but it doesn't suit her. In these two, she actually looks better to the left where there is more of a streaked highlighting and the color is a little bit more softer as compared to the dark one to the right. So that suits her more. But even this color doesn't feel like it's really correct for her. I find those highlights to be a bit too dramatic, a bit too strong against the blonde. So the, the darkness of the roots and the lightness of the hair is a little too intense for her. She has very delicate coloring. In fact, I think here to the right is where she looks her best. So the hair itself is a bit darker so that the difference between the roots and the hair is very subdued, which is the opposite of these dramatic highlights that the soft dramatic hair calls for, but it is in fact what suits her best. So again, not everything will apply to everyone and you have to really figure out what's going to work for you. Avoid sharp geometric cuts. So if we go back here, these three looks at the bottom, the first two are too sharp and straight and angular, and it really doesn't suit her. There's not enough curve to the hair. And you can see in this third look, it's a lot more feathered out, those bangs, they're a lot softer, and they have that bit of a curve to it in the front, and that softens it up and makes it more flattering on her, and she looks great. So avoid geometric cuts, especially if they're just gonna be straight with no volume and no curve. Avoid symmetrical, blunt styles. Avoid wash and wear styles that are unfinished looking. Notice how disheveled they both look here. Avoid overly delicate and wispy styles. Here, Hannah's hair looks so, it's too ornate, right? There's not enough volume in it. She really, the volume aspect of her hair is so important for making her look her best. And here she just looks stark in a way. Makeup. Makeup should emphasize strong eyes and cheeks and luscious lips. Bold color choices give drama. So this is important for this type. They really do shine in a bold color and bold intense makeup. They need visible makeup that pulls the look together and without it, it will look very flat. Let's compare Rachel Weiss in the top middle and top right. In the top middle, she has that beautiful bold pink lip and I think she looks her best. To the right of that, she also looks great, but the lip is slightly more subdued. And I can already tell the difference, right? That intensity of color gave her something, but she still looks great. But as we move down, you can see that the less makeup she has visibly on, she loses some polish. And in the middle, she has that like no makeup look and she just looks sort of incomplete. The same is true for Tyra. Comparing top to bottom, she looks much better when the makeup is bold and vivid. In the look below, she looks rather dull and just not like herself. 
And now with all of that, I hope you're in a position to answer the question, are you a soft dramatic? If you liked the sample wardrobe that I created for the soft dramatic, I would love to give it to you as a free download. All I need from you is your name and email address, and you'll be part of my email list that I am now starting to grow. So please click on the link in the description box, and hopefully it's a big help to you. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like the content that I'm creating, or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. I'll see you on the next one.